three, two, one. Here we go! Hello and welcome to New Coastal, Louisiana. For more than a decade at our facility on the banks of the Mississippi, we have been safely building the foundation for a sustainable future by producing high quality direct reduced iron. As part of the largest steel and steel products manufacturer in the United States and the largest recycler in North America, our St. James Parish, Louisiana facility is integral in Nucor's raw material strategy. Our highly skilled workforce uses cutting edge technology to manufacture this essential raw material for advancing sustainable steel making. Our natural gas DRI process emits about one third of CO2 compared to iron produced in blast furnaces at integrated steel mills. We're committed to ongoing enhancements to further reduce our environmental footprint. We are proud to be a part of this Louisiana community and to contribute to its economic growth and development. Our commitment extends far beyond our plant's operations to supporting local initiatives and creating opportunities for our neighbors. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about Nucor Steel Louisiana. We are excited about the future of our role in advancing steel industry sustainably and responsibly. At Nucor, safety is our top priority. It's a fundamental value that guides our daily actions and decision-making processes. By fostering a culture of trust and open communication, we strive to create a workplace where everyone returns home the same way they left. At Nucor Steel Louisiana, our DRI process uses a natural gas feedstock that generates high quality iron units, which can then be combined with recycled scrap in Nucor steel mills to produce superior grades of steel. This process forms the foundation of circular steel making and the sustainable steel utilized in wind towers, solar installations, electric vehicles, and other infrastructure projects. Ore arrives in vessels from Brazil, Canada, and Sweden, each carrying up to 100,000 metric tons. Once at our port, the ore is transferred via a mile-long pipe belt to our ore yard, which can store up to 800,000 metric tons. The ore is then transferred by a conveyor to undergo the dry screening process. This step ensures only the desired size pellets proceed, while fines are screened out to optimize reactor performance. Screened ore is stored in day bins, each holding 4,500 metric tons and usually one type of ore. We use Waybelt feeders to create the optimal feed mix based on ore chemistry, market conditions, and upcoming shipments. The ore undergoes another round of dry screening followed by wet screening. The wet screeners use water nozzles to wash all the microfines to allow the pellets to smoothly flow through the reactor's charging system. The screened material is transferred by a conveyor belt and can be stored in any of our three feed bins. From the feed bins, dry cement is added to iron ore pellets to protect them from high temperatures in the reactor. The cement is sprinkled on the pellets as they move from the feed bins and is mixed in to ensure an even coating. Maintaining moisture within a specific range before coating ensures proper curing of the cement on each pellet. This coating prevents the pellets from clumping together in the reactor. Cement-coated pellets are stored in a set of two surge bins for curing, then transported by a vertical-walled pocket belt to the reactor. The reactor receives iron ore through a series of valves functioning as a pressurized lock hopper system, preventing the entry of air into the reactor while allowing the flow of ore. This system operates automatically and is equipped with sensors to ensure compliance with pressure and level requirements before ore loading. Ore is introduced into the reactor's interior via feed legs. As the ore descends into the reduction zone, it encounters hot process gas flowing counter currently. The process gas is a mixture of methane along with hydrogen and carbon monoxide, also called syngas. The methane interacts with the catalytic iron bed and reforms steam and carbon dioxide, which yields the carbon monoxide and hydrogen in the following reactions. The carbon monoxide and hydrogen then remove the oxygen from the iron ore, producing a purer form of iron. 
The methane in the gas deposits carbon in the DRI, which is useful to our steelmaking customers. The extent to which we reduce the ore is termed metallization, the ratio of metallic iron to total iron. Our process quality control revolves around metallization and carbon targets set by our process team. Following the reduction zone, pellets enter the cooling zone, where a cooling gas rich in methane circulates, lowering the product's temperature through sensible heat transfer and endothermic reactions. The DRI pellets are then discharged near ambient temperature and stored in DRI silos, each capable of holding 7,000 metric tons. Our reduction circuit cools, cleans, recompresses, and regenerates the process gas. With excess gas used as PGH burner fuel to enhance energy efficiency, After the compressors, CO2 is removed from the process gas via the absorber. Natural gas makeup is added and then goes to the heater to be preheated. At the heater outlet is the transfer line, which transfers the hot syngas to the reactor. Before the reactor, there is an oxygen injection system, which does two things. Increases temperature by partial oxidation generates reducing agents CO and H2 by partial oxidation. Before the reactor, there is also a bypass line, which allows us to send the syngas to a dummy circuit and protect the reactor in an emergency or during maintenance. Our plant is equipped with a CO2 removal system designed to capture CO2 from spent process gas. This system can remove up to 800,000 tons of CO2 per year aimed for sequestration. This initiative will slash our DRI Scope 1 emissions by approximately 60%. The system uses an amine to absorb CO2 from the process gas. And then the amine is regenerated using steam in the stripper unit. The CO2 free gas is recirculated back into the process, while the CO2 rich gas undergoes further processing to eliminate sulfur compounds in the sulfur ox system. Our briquetter uses agglomerating techniques to bring fine particles that are screened from our DRI to create briquettes. Through screening and dust collections, we generate about 250,000 metric tons per year. We utilize this technology to turn this into a value-added DRI product. The silos serve two main purposes storing DRI material before shipping and passivating it. Each silo has a capacity of 7,000 metric tons and is used to hold DRI pellets and briquettes for 60 to 72 hours. During storage, the atmosphere inside is made inert with nitrogen and a small amount of oxygen present. This oxygen reacts to form a thin protective oxide film on the pellet surface, enhancing their stability for shipping. This process is known as passivation. Finally, the silos are loaded out and the DRI undergoes another screening before being transferred to the pipe belt. From there, the product is metered into barges using telescopic chutes. They undergo surveys and are sent to our Nucor customers via the Mississippi River. Nucor is committed to a net zero by 2050 goal. And a large part of how we will reach that goal is by reducing emissions from our raw materials. We recently partnered with ExxonMobil on a carbon capture and storage agreement to capture, transport, and store up to 800,000 metric tons of CO2 annually. This transformative project will lead to the production of some of the lowest embodied carbon DRI in the world. Thank you for learning about our DRI production process at Nucor Steel, Louisiana. We are committed to advancing the steel industry sustainably and responsibly.